Hello everyone. Uh, this is Pratik. Um, we're going to be taking a look at how do you install AdGuard on your Mac OS, uh, irrespective of your Mac machine, obviously. Uh, you can do it on your MacBook, uh, your Mac mini. Um, and yeah, it, it should be a pretty, pretty straightforward um, exercise. And uh, I'm uh, just for context, I'm using my M4 Mac mini, the base variant. It's a pretty cool machine and I highly recommend it to somebody who's never tried out Mac OS. Or even if you've tried out Mac OS and are used to working in a Mac environment, Mac mini is amazing. It's been amazing for me so far and I, I have a lot of things that I want to use it for. So yeah, just starting off on this journey. Okay, cool. So uh, as a background, what is AdGuard? AdGuard is a cool piece of software that basically blocks ads. Uh, it can block pop-ups, uh, random ads that you see on websites, and uh, there's multiple places that you can host it on. Like you can, It's like multi-platform. You can host it on Windows machines, on your Linux servers, your Mac OSs, even on your router. Like You can point the DNS server to your machine where you host it. And uh, yeah, it's a neat little piece of software which helps you a lot in terms of blocking malicious content, uh, phishing links, and stuff like that. And uh, it does that using filter lists and uh, it already has some filter lists you can add some of your own to it and it also gives you a level of control over uh, like content that your kids might be able to see so it has some cool parental control features uh, and yeah I highly recommend it um, let's take a look it, it's very simple to install uh, and uh, it does its job so let's see here I am on the Docker Hub page uh, of AdGuard and uh, it has some cool information that if you want to take a look at, but uh, we're not going to be doing any of those. We're just going to be focusing on the installation. Uh, and you can see on the quick start section, you'll see there's a command to pull the image. So on your terminal, we will run this command. The image should not be that large. It's a very small and compact piece of software. So I would say like around 100 megabytes. So once your image is downloaded, you'll be able to see that your image is here. It's under 100 megabytes. Pretty cool. The next step in the documentation is creating directories for persistent configuration. So I guess you need to create some sort of directories where uh, your data would persist even though if your container is not working and stuff like that, which is really smart. So let's see. It says you need your work door and your conf door. So let me do both. I already created um, an ad guard directory. So in that, let me just quickly do uh, a conf door and also a work door. And we will quickly cd into work door and get the path because we'll have to do um, the you know, docker run command in which you need to pass in your path for the persistent volume. And you can find the docker run command on the docker page itself. It's this one. So uh, if for anyone who's never hosted anything, you should be, it should be very simple. You should be good to go because you obviously won't have any ports which are mapping to some other things or you're not using any other services. Uh, we're just going to be doing a normal docker run command. Obviously, if you want to do, a, if you already have a services docker compose file, you can just add those there and make the modifications to any ports if they might be in use. But uh, yeah, that's not the point of this video. So we're just going to be looking at a very basic installation. Um, we will run this command out here. And as you can already see, I had run this before just to make sure it's working. But uh, we will just run docker run and substitute your path to the work door and the conf door in the first section of the dash v command and uh, just make sure your work door is work it doesn't really care it doesn't really matter because of the naming conventions it can be anything but just for your own sanity it just makes sense to have a work door and work and a conf door and conf and uh, yeah you don't need to change any of these ports uh, if you're a beginner or a new user you just don't care it'll do whatever it needs to do if you want to change the ports be my guest do whatever you like and we hit enter so the container should be up once the container is up, you can see in the containers tab that it's running. We called it AdGuard Home. And uh, we're going to be going to port 3000 where we'll see what the UI looks like, the admin console. So uh, let me quickly zoom in a bit. Awesome. 
So it says, welcome to AdGuard. It lists all the interfaces that it's listening on, uh, all the interfaces on which the DNS server uh, is going to be present. And it asks you to make sure that you have a static IP address. That's really important. And uh, once you can do that, you click on next, enter a username uh, and a password. Once you've done that, uh, this is really cool. It, in, it gives you all these instructions as to how do you run this or set it up on your router, on a Windows machine, Mac OS, Android, iOS, DNS, XYZ. There's a lot of options. We only care about the Mac OS and it gives you instructions on how to set it up. I already know it, so it's, we'll just go through it in the video. Click on next, open the dashboard, Ooh. Uh, enter your credentials. And once you do, you'll see this is what the dashboard looks like. Um, it gives you how many DNS queries you've put in, how many were blocked, how many were malware, how many adult websites were blocked and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. And obviously if you want to see those uh, instructions again, you can always navigate to setup guide and then go to Mac OS, Windows, whatever you need. So for our case, what we're gonna do is we will call settings, go to search, do DNS. Okay, so there's going to be there's already going to be some addresses out here. We don't really care about those uh, because we're going to be changing it to point to our own uh, Docker image, and we know the Docker image is hosted in your local host. So I'm just going to do this and uh, press that's colon colon one for somebody who can't see, and then just do okay, and we should be good. Awesome. So as you can see, as soon as you point your DNS to your uh, ad guard in your Wi-Fi, uh, you'll see there's already some DNS queries and you'll be able to see what queries it's been doing, uh, what the upstreams are, what the upstreams response time is, what was the top block domain for all your web traffic, uh, what your clients are and stuff like that. So it's a nice, neat little piece of software. And uh, yeah, it's fairly cool. It's very simple to set up. I highly recommend it because there's been more than one instances uh, where I have accidentally clicked on links that I was not supposed to click on and I'm always scared about any malicious links or any you know data grifting links and it's always helpful to have something of this sort uh, looking after you where if you're not too careful on what you're clicking it's just easier that it does not pop up on your machine so yeah this is it this is AdGuard and uh, I highly recommend it so thank you and if you have any questions Feel free to reach out. Cheers.